I want to ask you a very simplistic question, <laughs> but it's it's something that evades everybody. How does one manage to find happiness? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> really simple question. But no one today is happy. <laughs> Why do you say that? Yeah, <laughs> do I look unhappy? You don't. <laughs> <laughs> so many people around us are just not, or they're not be able to be happy for other people, or just with what they have necessarily. They're always looking for the next, next goal, purpose, something. Um, it could be material vindication, it could be exp experiential, anything. One simple thing is, every human experience has mm. a chemical basis to it. Okay. What you call as peace is one kind of chemistry. What you call as happiness or joy is another kind of chemistry. Ecstasy is one kind of chemistry. Agony is another kind of chemistry. Anxiety another kind of chemistry. Yes. Stress another kind of chemistry. All levels of pleasantness and unpleasantness is rooted in a certain chemical background within you. Okay. Or in other words, what you call as this is a certain chemical soup. Okay. The question is only, are you a great soup or a lousy soup? Okay <laughs> <laughs> Now, if I give soup making ingredients to ten different people, mm. the same ingredients, ten people will not produce the same soup. True. Ten soups will taste in ten different ways, though the ingredients are same. Similarly, all of us are made with the same ingredients. Right. But see in how many different ways we made ourselves. So it's time to pay attention to soup making, <laughs> that this is a great soup, this is not a lousy soup. <laughs> right. okay. If you establish a chemistry of blissfulness, right. that's how you will be. This is what we are teaching people. We are not advising people to be happy or peaceful. Mm. We are teaching them how to engineer your chemistry the way you want it. Okay. You create a chemistry of blissfulness, mm. then why are you bothered about being happy? Mm. That's how it will be. In fact, Sadhguru, you've in fact created an organization where there is a lot of, I mean, people are volunteering, uh, they're happy, <laughs> there's, a, there's a very positive uh, vibe and culture, uh, for instance. How have you managed to create uh, such an organization? Wonderful people around me. <laughs> Wherever I go, whichever <laughs> part of the world I am in, not a single day passes for me right. without witnessing tears of joy and love around me, every day. Somebody will be shedding tears of love mm. and joy. I don't think there's a better way to live in this world <laughs> And all of us should strive to create our own circles of joyfulness and mm. pleasantness around us. Because if you're not joyful by your own nature, if you're always mm. ha going around with the fear of suffering, as long as fear of suffering is there within you, you will never walk your life with full stride. It will always be half a step. Mm. Most human beings have crippled themselves simply because of fear of suffering. What will happen to me is always the question. Whatever happens, this is how I will be. If this assurance comes to you, only now you will want to scale the peaks of life and see what about it. Mm. If it happens, makes no difference to you. If it doesn't happen, makes no difference to you. That's when you would like to really explore every dimension of life. So first and foremost thing is this, that your way of being is not determined by what's around you. If you bring this one aspect to you, there is no fear of suffering. Once there is no fear of suffering, you will traverse the breadth and length of this life without hesitation. As a spiritual teacher and counselor for the last 35 years, it's my job to help people solve their problems. In other words, they are unable to find the happiness that they are seeking. Although, the quest is for happiness. If I say, what is it that you want in life? Somebody writes, I want a big car, I want to be a venture capitalist, I want whatever. Ultimately, the reason why you want all these things is because they will bestow happiness upon you. In other words, we are all looking for one thing, which is happiness. 
you go and sit in a cinema hall and derive happiness from the plot to take from the example that Mr. Baman Irani has given. As long as it's giving you happiness, you are looking at it with great joy. The moment that turns into boredom, you walk out or you switch off. In other words, we are always seeking happiness. And the problem is that we are not finding it. The reason we are not realizing that it's not by increasing the externals but by changing the internals that you will find happiness. So let me give you a little example. There was this man who would always curse God that what did you give me in life? I am poor and I don't have much and my friends are so blessed in so many ways. He developed an itch in his eye. When he went and showed it to the doctor, the doctor said, my, my, you have a cancerous growth. I will need to take out both your eyes, otherwise you will die. He was shattered. He had two options, to live blind or not to live at all. It was not a choice. He agreed for the surgery. He entered the ward with this understanding that when he comes out, he'll not be able to see again. When the doctor opened his eyes, he discovered it was only a viral fungus. In other words, there was no need to extract the eye. He cleaned it up and stretched it. When the bandages were finally open, he could see. And he said, wow, I can see. Thank you for the eyes that I possess. He had the eyes earlier as well, but he was not seeing them as a blessing. When they were about to be snatched, but were not snatched, he realized that he does have a blessing. In other words, none of us here, I estimate, is blind. We have been given these two eyes fitted with five hundred million neurons each with the help of which we can see the beauty of a rainbow, the glory of an eagle in flight. We have been bestowed with two ears, each fitted with 24,000 fibers, with the help of which you can hear the mirth of children in laughter, the melody of an orchestra, the rustling of the leaves in the wind. We all have a million reasons to be happy, but we have not learned the art of how to think. So I created utilizing the technology of today, which is YouTube, I created five five-minute episodes for 21 of them, and our team uploaded them from the 1st of January till the 21st. This is the 21-day happiness challenge. It will present you with 21 tools to implement in yourself the things that we have discussed. That is the happiness challenge. Oh, I want to tell you a story. Are you ready? Yes. There was a king and the king was walking with his minister one day and in the farm he saw a farmer along with his family, husband, wife and his one. They were buzzing, so much life in them. Their faces were radiant, they were happy, they were beaming with joy. They were singing. They had so much affection and love for each other. And the king said, man, I have a massive palace and I have everything that one could dream for. And these guys are more happier than me. Why? Minister said, Sir, because this family is not a member of the 99 club.
So the king said, what is? 99 club. Minister said, give me 99 gold coins, I'll tell you. So the king gave him a bag of 99 gold coins and the minister said, after six months, I will tell you, not today. So the minister took that bag of 99 gold coins and put it right at the doorstep of the farmer. In the morning when the farmer got up, he saw a bag right at his doorstep. He picked the bag up, went back into his house. Excited as he was, he opened the bag and gosh, lo and behold, glittering gold, gold coins. He'd never come across such a stroke of good fortune. He emptied the contents on the floor and started counting. They were 99. I said, I'm going to excited that I'm going to go back. 99. He said, who is that idiot? Who forgot to put one egg? If you wanted to put one round figure, what did he do in 99? So he called his wife, two gin, brother. Mera sar chal, mera sar chal, two gin. So she counted. He said, 99. He said, 13 is also running. He called the son, said, gin. Everyone 99. He said, God, we can't live like this. We have to do 100. So he started working hard to get that one gold coin. And it would take him months and years to get one. And then the wife was thinking, my husband is such a nut. Such a nut. We have 99 gold coins and this guy doesn't spend anything. So she took two gold coins and went for shopping. So every day the guy would come and in the evening he would count the gold coins. So that day he came and he counted the gold coins. Only 97. Pele ek kam tha bhi do gaya. So he shouted, where did the two gold coins go? She said, well, I am not a nut like you. I thought I'll go sh do some shopping. So I went and spent the two gold coins. Oh God, the farmer yelled, I am toiling, working hard, putting my blood and sweat to get that one gold coin and you nuts are spending these two gold coins away. Meanwhile, the son spent two more, 95 left. Six months passed by and the king and the minister were walking by. And the buzz had gone, the life had gone, the song had gone, the love had gone. There's only arguments, fights, bickering. And the king said, what happened? The minister said, now they are officially members of the 99 club. So the king said, man, you took 99 gold coins. What is the 99 club? The minister said, 99 club is a club of those who have 99 gold coins, but in running after the one, they don't use their 99 gold coins. Ek ke piche bhaakte bhaakte na, saw pe paunchte paunchte na, ye ninyanvi ka kya achara dhan na hai? I have learnt one thing in my life and I thoroughly believe in it. Don't wait for the destination. Start finding happiness while you are on the journey. Don't postpone your happiness to then. Dasvi mein jaunga, barvi mein jaunga, nokri milega, yaisa hoega, taisa hoega, phir hoega. Today, I may have the greatest challenge. That doesn't mean I should postpone my satisfaction. Today I may be in the middle of the greatest chaos. That doesn't mean I should postpone my satisfaction. Happiness is a journey, not a destination. A common complaint where I'm from, where I'm surrounded by lots of smart overachievers, is that happiness is for stupid people or happiness is for lazy people. A lot of times entrepreneurs will say, I don't want to be happy because I want to be successful. If I'm too happy, perhaps I will lose my desire and I will no longer work hard and I will no longer be successful. And like everything else, there is some truth to this. Generally, the more intelligent you are, the more you can see behind the facade of everyday life being easy, 
or safe, you can see all the risks and the downsides and the calamities that await us. You can see the cynicism and the manipulation behind so many things that are portrayed as being good for you or good for society. You naturally become cynical and you signal your intelligence through cynicism. Very smart people will often communicate in purely cynical observations. It's okay to not want to be happy, but we're going to explore together whether you can increase your happiness level without significantly lowering your drive and without significantly lowering your intellect. So let's take the first one, which is, I'm not happy because I'm smart. Partially true. You are unhappy partially because you know too much. You've been exposed to too much. You understand too much. But that doesn't mean that you can't undo it and retain your intelligence. You're not smart because you're unhappy. So don't get it backwards. But yes, you're unhappy because you're smart. It means that it's going to take more work for you to be happy. But the good news is smart people are good at figuring out the truth. And it turns out the more you dig into certain deep truths, the naturally freer and more peaceful you will become. And that peace will itself lead to happiness. If you're so smart, why aren't you happy? I absolutely believe that is true. The beauty in being mentally high functioning in our society is that you can trade it for almost anything. If you're smart, you can figure out how to be healthy within your genetic constraints. If you're smart, you can figure out how to be wealthy within your local environmental constraints. If you're smart, you can figure out how to be happy within your biological constraints. But your biological constraints are a lot larger than you might think. For people who have ever gotten drunk, been on psychedelics, meditated deeply, experienced altered states of mind through breathing and hypnotic techniques, they turn into versions of themselves that are much happier for brief periods of time. Now, some of this is a fake pleasure-driven happiness, of course, but there's some truth to it as well, or you wouldn't desire that state. So in a sense, it can show you the dynamic range that you have as a human. The ability that you have to go into certain states where you're happier is actually quite large. So how do you nudge yourself in that direction on a perpetual basis, as opposed to just visiting there by essentially stunning your mind into submission and silence.